Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be working together trying to save some wildlife in Endangered. In this game, you are going to be taking actions that further your goal. That goal, of course, being, like I said, to protect endangered species, and you are going to be rolling dice, placing those dice on specific actions to get you those goals, to accomplish that and save these animals. Uh, I'm going to show you how the game works. I'm going to give you a quick overview. I'm not going to go into every detail. And then after that, we'll come on back up here. I'm going to dive a little bit more into what I think of the game and who I think it might be good for. Here we go. The first thing you need to do is decide which scenario you are going to play. You can play the sea otter scenario, or you can play the tiger scenario, which is actually the one I've got set up here. On the other side of the board is uh, a water sort of landscape that you can use for the uh, sea otter scenario here, and they give you some of the details that are particular to that scenario, all right? There's also on the back of these, three ways to scale the difficulty for the game. Everybody's gonna pick their character. You're going to get your three dice, your deck of cards. You pick a starting card, this little card here, out of two choices, uh, and you are good to begin. You've set all this up, right? So how do you win the game? How do you lose the game? Let's start there. You win the game by having enough votes, enough influence out there to win. And you are going to do that by putting these influence cubes on these cards up here to affect different uh, worlds and their thought on preserving the tigers in this case, okay? So you need a number of these placed on enough cards so that four, for the normal difficulty, four of these get yes votes when you need them to. And in this case, because we have three players, that would be at the end of the fifth round for three players, and then you have another chance to do it at the end of the sixth round. If you don't do it by then, you lose. Okay, so that's how you win. One way to win, get four of these to be yeses. You lose one of three different ways. Obviously by not getting those yes votes by the end of the sixth round, okay? But you also lose if all the animals are gone or you're down to zero or one on the board. They can no longer reproduce, so you've lost. Or if you run out of these, uh, that are deforestation in this case, if you need to place one and there aren't any more, then you also lose the game. So let me give you a breakdown of how each round is gonna go, okay? The players are gonna be able to take their turns in whatever order they want to. So we're gonna say that the philanthropist is gonna go first, all right? They're gonna take their token, their player token here, you're gonna put it on top of the calendar up here to denote you're taking your turn or you've taken it, all right? Then you go down the, uh, the phases over here. The first one is the actions phase in which you take your three dice, if the, at the beginning of the game they're just in front of you, later on you retrieve them from here and you roll those dice. So there we go, I got a one, a one, and a four. Now I am going to use them to take actions. So this is still the actions phase, the first phase. I can place these out here on these cards and take associated actions with them, all right? So for example, I could play here any die and it says I can move one animal one space. Great, I can move this tiger here move them down to there so that there is another uh, mating pair there, all right? And I'll talk about that in just one second. And so you'll do that for various things. You can go over here and get two million um, in the support. And then with their uh, four that they had, I think it was a four, they can go somewhere and, you know, maybe that one and play a card. You do have two cards at the beginning of the game in your hand. So they might play another one and make another action available. There we go. So that's it, they've taken their three actions, all right? And now we go to the next phase, which is the offspring phase. So we are going to roll a die to see if any of the uh, tigers breed in this case. The number we are rolling for, we need to roll uh, one, we're gonna count them the, the pairs, one, two, three on the board. We add one to that. So our target number is four, okay, in this case. And we wanna roll that number or below. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna roll, perfect, I got a one. That one would have given us an uh, offspring no matter what. It's the best thing you can roll for the offspring, right? And now you follow the rules for the tigers, for the offspring. You're gonna put out an offspring. You're gonna put it adjacent to any mating pair. So for example, I can put it here. And then the mating pair, because of the way tigers behave, 
uh, the rules tell you one of them is going to leave to an adjacent empty space. So, okay, we're gonna have this tiger then walk out to this spot. There we go. That is the, uh, the offspring phase. Next up, we have the destruction phase. And again, this might be different per uh, scenario you're playing. You have to pick a line or a column in this one. So I'm gonna pick, um, yeah, I'm gonna pick this line right here at the top and I'm gonna roll this die. It gives me a two, which is terrible because the one, the two spot is where this offspring is. And that means we have to, unfortunately, it's gonna be some deforestation there. We lose the animal if we cover it with one of those deforestation tiles. So if a four had come up, it would have gone here instead and left that tiger alone, but that's not what we got, we got a two. So there we go. Next up we have the impact phase in which you are going to draw a, a, an impact card over here for the scenario and deal with whatever it is. Some of them are gonna be constants, some of them are um, going to be instant abilities. This one is instant. It says uh, any one player may pay three million to discard one active persistent impact. Well, nobody's got it and there aren't any anyway. Actually, that player does have it, but there aren't any, so that's great. So that's done. And then we go to the final phase uh, which is on the back here called the upkeep phase and largely not a lot happens. You draw a card and that's basically it. Now another player will go who hasn't gone yet. And again, the turn order here is whatever you want. So we could have the uh, environmental lawyer over here go next. They'll play that and they'll go through all the same phases, right? They'll draw their dice, they'll roll them, they'll play them. One big thing that's important, when you go somewhere that already has dice, your new die must be higher than anything already there. So this player could go here with the six. Uh, they could go, you know, with the one to any of the empty spaces, so forth. And you can always, with any die, go down here to the social media campaign that gets you money or draw. Uh, you can draw a card there. So you can always go there. There are no limits there, but everywhere else, you have those limitations. You can also only go to each place once. So this player cannot, with their one and their four, they cannot go here and then go here again. You can only be in one place once. And that's it, they'll go through all the motions, they will roll for uh, the uh, offspring with that die, they'll roll for the uh, devastation and destruction with that die, they'll draw a new impact card, they will draw a new hand card, and this will continue. Now, Again, how do we win here? How do we get these cubes up here? Well, you're trying to get actions down here on the board that are going to allow you to do that. Let's go ahead and find one, shall we? Uh, some of these, by the way, I should mention are uh, one-time cards, such as that one. It's just a one-time ability. But most of them have actions, which would go out here on the board, and players can choose to place their die there and uh, take an action. So let's go ahead and find ourselves one of these that lets you put out uh, influence on the ambassadors. So that one, for example, sign petition. So if that was out here, then any player could go there and they would choose one of these, in this case, a single one, and put it out here in any one of these. So we're gonna go with, uh, how about that one, okay? Now, once you put it down on one, if it's still face down, we then reveal it and we check what it is. And these all have a little formula that you are trying to um, to surpass the total. So in this case, we are looking at France, and it says you are going to count the persistent impacts that are in play, and you're going to add all the influence on this card, and you need at least eight. If that's the case, then this one is a yes vote, and that one passes, all right? And some of these are going to be counting how much of the, how many of the destruction tiles are left in the supply, plus the influence here. Uh, this one is total money among all the players, plus the influence, right? Uh, some of them are going to count how many animals are left on the board, and some of them are even based on die rolls. So this one, for example, you roll two dice, then you add the influence there, and if it's at least 10, you've passed. That's a yes vote. That's how the game works. Like I say, you're trying to get these to be yeses, four of them, uh, depending on the number of players uh, on, on a specific round. All right, And that's pretty much it. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how the game plays. And like I said, a few of these things are different. The way uh, that offspring work, the way that uh, the devastation, the, the destruction phase works, the way a lot of things work really is going to be different based on the scenario that you are playing with. The game comes with these two here. So let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you my thoughts and feelings on the game.
That is Endangered. I tend to like this kind of co-op game, and by that I mean sort of middleweight, low to medium complexity, uh, some luck and some skill mixed. I like those kinds of co-op games. You know, if they're too heady, they push me out. I feel like um, I'm trying to solve too much of a puzzle with no luck. And if they're too lucky, well, I feel like I'm, it's not up to me if I do well or not. This one, I think, is yet another game that hits that nail right on the head, and I'm very happy about that. So let's go ahead and dive into some uh, deeper thoughts uh, uh, as to what I think of it. Overall, like I said, I am impressed. I'm very happy with this game. So let's dig into the theme, okay? One of my, one of my concerns going into this was, is this game going to come across as a, a, a preachy game? Is it going to be the bad kind of educational game? I'm happy to report, I don't think so. I think it uh, it tackles a serious theme. It tackles it uh, well, it tackles it. And interestingly, it's an engaging game without beating you over the head, without feeling preachy. Great job on the theme. I, I think it is, uh, it's wonderful to see a, a theme like this not be treated lightly, not be dismissed, but also not feel like it's wagging its finger at you. I enjoy it. It's still a game, right? At the end of the day, it's one that's possibly could, uh, you know, uh, instigate some change. But it's a game first and foremost, and I'm happy with that. The aesthetics here are very nice. All the pieces are quality. It's got a good look. It's got a, a, generally a good aesthetic. Uh, real clean. I like that about it. The replay value here, what's included, is very nice. I do wish there was more. You are getting two scenarios, right? You got the sea otters, you got the tigers. Uh, but I do wish there were more scenarios, as they call them, and I do wish there were more of the um, the goals, the cards that go across the top, and you you know the the ambassador cards. I wish there were more of those. After a couple of games, you've likely seen them all. And so it's just more about the discovery of which ones. A few more would not have hurt, okay? This is still getting a thumbs up here from me because I think what's there is good. It's replayable. You're going to keep coming back to it, right? I have. But uh, yes, I, I, I would like some more. The um, game arc. Wonderful. Nice mounting pressure. Nice highs and lows. Moments of luck. Moments you thought you were going to get crushed. You're hoping something's going to go your way and it does. Moments where surprise is going to knock the wind out, uh, you know, from from under your uh, from your sails. Is that a saying? Yeah, that's a saying. Um, so I really like it. I, I love the way it feels. You've also you got those two chances to get the big yes votes. And so if you miss the first one, you're like, okay, we can we got one more chance at this, you know. Um, so that's good. The only thing I could see being perhaps problematic is. If you are not even, if you feel like you're not close to making it, there uh, it might feel slightly anticlimactic as the game is wrapping up. Like there isn't one moment. Sometimes, anyway, sometimes there is a moment where you like flip a card and ah, we lost, we lost, game's over. Great, that's fine. But sort of like slowly anticlimactic. You know, slowly losing the game could be anticlimactic. But again, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, folks. This is not a big thing, okay? Uh, and then the other thing is with fewer players you do have fewer actions, right? I mean, I'm sorry, with more players, you have fewer actions. So if you're playing with five, you have very few actions. It's a great two-player game, for example. Great solitaire play. Uh, it's, you, play, you run two characters if you're playing solitaire, and they just go back and forth. You don't take the, the turns in whatever order you want to. They just go back and forth, right? Um, so I would say three, great. Two, great. Solo, great. Four might you know fine, but I, I, I would I'd like it with a fewer with a lower player count myself. Um, ease of play, very good, really smooth turns, very easy to engage with this game. Um, it it is you can tell love and care, and you know a lot of sort of smoothing over has gone into the game to make it not just smooth, but where you can have a plug-in part, right? Where you can plug in a scenario and then plug that out, plug in another one. I really hope there are more of these coming, to be honest. Uh, and then lastly, tactics and strategy and luck. Like I said, it's my favorite kind of, of uh, cooperative game. 
you know, some strategy, some luck, some reacting, some tactics, right? Some adapting and changing of plans. It's the kind of game that is going to, um, you are going to, requ it's going to require planning of, of you. It's going to require you to slow down and think those plans through. It's going to require you to adapt when those plans go awry. Talk amongst yourselves. Not all the time, right? I like that. I like that you can just take some turns and you're like, yeah, good, good turn. But sometimes you need to just slow down and go, Hold on now. If I do this, you'd have to roll a really specific number to play there because I'm blocking that space with, you know, a five. So you'd have to get a six if you want to go there. Really neat stuff. So there you go. My bottom line for this one, this gets a big thumbs up, a big eight out of ten from me, which is a strong seal of approval. I definitely recommend it. I think it's a great game. I want to see more, okay? That's my main thing right now. I'm hoping, I know that there was one more, um, one more scenario for a Kickstarter, which I don't, don't have, haven't played, uh, for the Pandas. I haven't seen that, um, but I would love to see more support for this, really, and, uh, if they are as distinct as the two in here are from each other, I think this is going to be a really great package uh, overall. As it is right now, obviously, I recommend it. You should check this out. If you're a fan of the kinds of co-op games I'm talking about here, I think you're gonna dig this game. But uh, yes, kudos to the company and the designer, and I want to see more content for this, so keep it coming, please. That's gonna be it for me, like I said, seal of approval for Endangered. I'm Z Garcia, I'll see you on the next one.